You know what the crazy thing is, is that <clears throat> they've herded us intellectually into being animals, reactive, violent, panicky animals. And the big problem with that is that their whole rationalization for thinking for the masses because they know what's better for the masses than the masses do because they're a bunch of reactive, violent, panicky animals. And so, sadly, we're sort of proving their case Regardless of the fact that we were herded this way, um, you know, at some point in time, because it's never happened in the history of mankind, some civilization is going to rise up and take their sovereignty and their rights and their power back. I, you know, hasn't happened yet, ever in recorded history. And it's just, it's crazy that it, you know, people are playing Candy Crush and you know, Fortnite and whatever, you know, and they're awesome, awesome. Of course, yeah, they're awesome. It, you know, it, and you know, did the the person that created Candy Crush was that a person that wants to the New World Order? Probably not, because at this point it's so ingrained in society. Uh, you know, it's these are all just happenstances of what mankind desires. Desires are not something that should be fulfilled perpetually. That's bad for mankind. Needs should be fulfilled perpetually. Desires should not be. And so, you know, since Edward Bernays, the nephew of Sigmund Freud, intervened into advertising of products back in whatever it was, 1913, whatever it was, and <clears throat> changed of how changed how they advertise products as to not what they do for your needs but how it makes you feel and so then it's what you desire and that was you know that was mankind unwittingly putting their hands into handcuffs and, uh, and and now it's gone through generations upon generations, and now people think that's just the way it is. They they think, well, oh man, whatever the police says, you better do it. And you know, I I do know that the police are in usury. They think they're just doing a job. They think they're actually doing what's right. Sometimes they are, but you know, they're still just employees of a corporation trying to contract with you, whether they know it or not. The sad thing is, is we don't know it, and we don't know that we can politely refuse that offer to contract. And that's all it is. And if it gets to the point where you have to sign the ticket, then, you know, you should autograph it and correct sentence structure, parsing syntax grammar, but you can also just sign it in cursive, which is, you know, the language of the cursed or the dead, but that's fine. Um, you know, but under... Neath or over your signature, you write without prejudice, UCC 1-308, which is your reservation of rights. You know, that, you know, you are, the, the, the statute of this compelled performance law of equity does not pertain to the living man or woman. They pertain to you 
they pertain to the person, these things are not the same entity as the living man or woman. This is the big farce that's going on. And it, 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 yeah, it's just words, no big deal. Well, okay, well, words are everything. Words are what make up contracts. Contracts are what rule the entire planet, especially in admiralty law. You can be entered into contracts that you are not, you are, did not enter knowingly, voluntarily, or willingly, and you're still compelled to perform under them because you're taking benefits from the United States Corporation, and you don't know it. Yeah, bad shit. <laughs>